This is Maya Cook with Youth Culture, my- and today I'm joined by three very special young people, and they're here to talk to us a little bit about practicing advocacy as a young student, and especially during a difficult time like we are experiencing with the pandemic. So everyone, would you please introduce yourself with your name and then give us the biggest thing that you're passionate about? Devon, do you want to start us off on that? Um, Sure. Okay, so my name is Devon, or Days, that's my rap name, and um, something that I'm really passionate about is, of course, what I'm doing right now, fighting for equity and equality and social justice, and I'm also really passionate about making music and just, like, the art of it, so the fact that I'm able to combine those things and what I'm doing right now is just, like, the dream. Hi, my name is Young May. And I'm really passionate about rapping and the arts and just how to fight for our right of doing things. Hello, my name is Andrene, but you can call me Nate, but my name is Andrene. And something I'm passionate about is our voices being able to get heard from all over in different ways and to set the right mindset of kids just like us also. And that's so important right now. And so, well, it's so great to meet you guys, and I'm so happy to have you here because I know you've done a lot of work on the subject of advocacy. I know you guys are still young, but you've still done so much for it. So we're talking about advocacy. So my first question for you is, well, what is advocacy and what does it look like? Well, I answer that question. Advocacy is when you're standing up for your right and when you're fighting for something that you really believe in, like racial and social justice. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's especially important right now with everything that we've been seeing. So we've seen great social unrest in Louisville. And this summer, as you guys know, know, thousands of people took to the streets to protest police violence and demand racial justice through advocacy. So living as a kid during this time, if Louisville is your classroom and justice is your curriculum, how do you educate yourself on what's happening around you? Um, I answer that um, one too. I, just, oh, I can answer that. You can answer it if you want. Yeah, both of you, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I educate myself. Um, I watch a lot of social, like I'm always on social media like Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff like that. So it's like hard to escape it. Mm-hmm. So I see a lot of it and it's just the reality that we're faced with. And you see a lot of people like posting about it. And it's really important to know that there are a lot of young people like me, like staying informed and knowing what's going on. And it's just important to stay educated on it because You know, of course, it's the cliche, um, if you don't know your history, then it's going to repeat. It's also just like staying woke and knowing what is going on around you Mm -hmm. is what keeps you prepared for anything that could happen. Like you read and you look at everything that's going on and you're just, well, my point of view, you're thinking to yourself about how you can make the world better. And I think, you know, with what you're saying, this generation, since we have access to social media, we're actually very educated on what's going on, which is unlike anything we've ever seen, and which is so cool because, you know, we have all these young kids like you guys who know so much about what's going on and are actually able to make change. And I know we kind of already answered this by saying, you know, if you don't pay attention to um, history, it might repeat itself, but... Why is education so important when it comes to matters of racial injustice? I feel like a lot of times, like growing up, like you, especially in my community, it was growing up around a lot of people that just looked like you. It wasn't a very diverse community. It was just mostly like minorities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my like non-black friends it was just them growing up around people that look like them so there was like never really a clash and like even in school it was like not it was like we would be drawn to people that look like us so we would naturally segregate ourselves due to being scared to interact 
with people who aren't like and aren't from where we're from. And that's just like in itself, us feeding into what society actually wants. But if you are like learning and like growing and teaching yourself and teaching other people that it's okay to step outside of your comfort zone and it's okay to fight for social justice, then over time it spreads and it grows and people just coming together and was really important and equity and solidarity and everything like that. Mm -hmm. That is beautifully said and you know having that diversity is so important and that inclusion and that sets up an environment where people are comfortable having these uncomfortable conversations. Um, so that kind of leads us into our next topic. A lot of people don't want to get involved in the movement towards racial justice because they are uncomfortable with these difficult conversations they're afraid of speaking up or they claim that they're apolitical, which means they're not interested in politics. Um, so what's dangerous though about staying silent on issues that we're seeing in our communities? Um, it's dangerous because if you're not speaking up, it's basically like you're doing it too because you're not speaking up about it. So it wouldn't make sense if you don't speak up about it. I would get if it's like your religion or something or something like that, but it's important because if, like say you were that person and you're getting like stuff happening like that to you, you will want people to fight for your justice. Just as much as you need as just as much as people need you to fight for theirs. And I agree with that because sometimes we need that extra boost of help. And what we're going through right now, like, we really don't have, we have a lot of people on our side, but we need more support than when we're fighting for what is right, basically. So I'm agreeing with what she said. Everybody needs to have their own voice in, like, a saying or something. So, yeah. Right. And we need a whole community to come together. And mm -hmm. I think you bring up a good point that if you're just a bystander, then sometimes you're just as good as the person, the aggressor. I agree. It's like, I would, like, you see so many people, and it's so heartbreaking when you're like, oh, do you support Black Lives Matter? Or they're like, oh, I don't support Black Lives Matter. Or, oh, why do you have to make it political? Yeah. And, and, my, and it's just like, being a Black person in society and getting your rights taken away and getting your life taken away because of the color that you are, is not a political subject. It's a life or death matter. Basic human rights should not be political. And if you're uncomfortable with that situation, then there's something wrong with you. Absolutely, basic human rights should never be politicized. And I think a problem that we see right now is a lot of adults um, or politicians try to make this an issue to get leverage on certain things, but it's like, come on, you know, like we really need to get to the root of this, which is the issue of human rights, which is definitely lacking right now. Um, so I think that was beautifully said, and I appreciate that you brought that up. And, you know, we've talked about people who don't want to be a part of these difficult conversations, but there will also always be people that disagree with your message, kind of like you were saying. So my question is, as a young person, what are some of the things that you can do to create a safe environment where you can have really serious conversations with people in your life that might disagree with you? So how do you do that? How I would do it in my perspective, I would like how I'm doing now, use my voice to get to other people that has the right, my mindset and or is trying to follow in other people's footsteps, which means basically even adults, like, I can even try to get adults to help, stuff like that. Try to get them in the right mindset of what we're trying to put as a picture on us and not how people see us. So making a right picture for who we are and what we represent and what we're saying. So I see a lot. I feel like it is important to, you know, speak to people who don't agree with you. And there are some people who... You gotta like take your time and talk to them. You know, just not learn to not pounce on them. 
which I see a lot because people get tired of the, you know, nonsense and like being annoyed by people disagreeing with the fact that they do deserve basic human rights. But I've also seen where there are black people who shun away people in the white community because they see because they face this emotional labor of having to re-educate on the same things over and over and over again but sometimes it's just like it's like oh you as a black person how do you feel but it's like there is a phone a laptop, a computer you have this you have that you have news you have social media you should not have to come to me just to know firsthand that I deserve basic human rights. There's literally Google and you could like Google that stuff. Now, if you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about, oh, how I have a protest made me feel or how I felt about the passing of Breonna Taylor and the Floyd and stuff like that, that's an entire different ball game. But feeling this emotional distress from people like pulling out of you but you have to deal with on a regular basis it is very tired mm -hmm. but of course it is important to you sometimes you know take your time and be um patient with people if you do want them to hear you Absolutely. I think you bring up a really good term here. You said that, you know, the emotional labor of having to re-educate people is just so tiring and it can also be really discouraging, I think. Um, so how can we teach other like young kids to not be discouraged though from speaking up or advocating when there's something that needs change? Because it is difficult. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead Renee, because you ain't get to talk. Uh, we can teach other young kids by telling, telling them the basis of what's going on, not getting into too much detail, but telling them the basis of what's going on and asking them how they can change the world and giving them the facts and all this. So, like, everybody should have a voice, like I've been saying. Everybody should have a voice because I know, like, some kids may doubt what they think. They might think it's not right. But in this situation, it's really not a right and wrong answer, especially for the kids, because a lot of kids are, like, really downhearted and really don't have a voice to speak up or to say anything. So I, like, I encourage all kids to say what you think should be right and what you think is wrong. Right. And there are also so many different ways that you can advocate. You know, mm -hmm. not all of it requires you to go stand in front of a crowd and public speak, you know, which is also, you can't do that right now because, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, we're on lockdown. Um, so I think that kind of brings us into my last question is around, well, how do we advocate? You know, the theme of this quarantine has been reimagining how we serve our community and how to advocate during a very challenging pandemic. So how can you demand justice as a young student when your state is on lockdown? Um, first of all, basically how we're doing right now, um, and I have noticed that there are, like, people that are like, oh, um, you have to protest, you have to do this, this, and that. Sometimes a virtu virtually protesting, so, like, signing petitions and, like, fighting for what's right on social media, get that out there so people can see that. And if you are protesting, you know, six feet, wear a mask, make sure you're corona free. Just like, if you're going to fight for what's right, it is also very important for you to take the necessary precautions to make sure that you're keeping yourself safe while fighting for justice. And also like making music, which is what we've been doing over the course of the past five or six years and what we've really been focusing on a lot this summer. And you guys make music and I think that's such a great like engaging way for young people to be able to engage with these like, really difficult conversations but just because they're difficult doesn't mean that we can't have them with young people. 
um, or that young people can't talk on these things. And I think that uh, something that we've seen from this movement are a lot of these young voices like you guys come up and come forth um, to take a stance. And I think something that would be kind of cool for our viewers, why don't you guys go ahead and tell us your ages? Because I know you guys are very young. Um, I can go first. Um, my name is Devon and I'm 14. My name is Andrene and I am also 14. And my name is Renee, aka Renee, and I'm 10 years old. All right, so we have two 14-year-olds and a 10-year-old, and you guys are already creating so much change. And I just think that that is so empowering, you know, like you're also faced with this difficult time in a pandemic and you're still getting your voice out there. And even just by doing things like this, having these conversations is very important because you're showing your peers and other young students that there are so many, still so many ways to advocate for justice. So you guys, I'm so excited to watch you continue to fight and do great things. Um, and I'm so proud of you for coming on today. So thank you guys so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.